One night during call, I decided to treat my colleagues to a special version of the red velvet cake. This is Senora Blanca Padilla, mi favorita Senora Gorda. As Gorda as she is, it is not without reason why she is that way and without regrets. Just as any epicure that has existed since the dawn of time, Miss Blanca has lived to that reputation. But just because she loves food, it does not mean that she will take any slop to her taste buds. In fact, she is the harshest of critics. Tonight, she'll have a slice of red velvet cake with Nutella dressing and cream cheese icing. Now back there is George. He's the nicest ancillary staff any hospital could get and makes great coffee too. So say hi, George. But back to the cake. Will it pass Senora Gorda's test? Well, here goes. Very, very good. Wonderful. Delicious. So, folks, if I could elicit a food gasm from Miss Blanca, so can you for your friends. And so, the ingredients for this exquisite cake are as follows. Two sticks or one cup of unsalted butter. Two and a half cups of brown sugar that is tightly packed. 2 and 1 fourth cups of sifted cake flour 1 or 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder 2 teaspoons of baking soda A teaspoon or 2 of salt 3 whole eggs A half cup of whole evaporated milk A tablespoon of vanilla A tablespoon of white vinegar And 2 or 3 tablespoons of red food coloring gel Combine the following in a bowl and sift well. Flour, cocoa powder, salt and baking soda, then set aside. In another bowl, cream your sugar and butter until fluffy. To do this, first incorporate both using a medium speed since you do not want specks of butter to be flying outside of the bowl. By increasing the speed, the sugar and butter are mixed thoroughly while air slowly becomes part of the mixture. Now this is important. It is this fluffing process, what is known as creaming the butter, adds lightness and leavening in the final cake batter. Now, allow me to speed the video and later notice just how velvety smooth the cream butter should be. This creaming process is usually achieved after about 3 minutes with the mixer at the highest speed. Once done, grab your spatula and center the cream butter with sugar in the middle of the bowl and set aside. Mix vinegar, vanilla, and milk. Many of you might ask, what is the vinegar doing in the milk? Although it would curdle the milk a bit by making it into cheese, the vinegar would activate the baking soda which would later give out gas by the reaction. It is this gas as a byproduct of a chemical reaction and process known as neutralization is what is needed to provide the further leavening of the cake. Going back again to the sugar and butter mixture, it's time to add the eggs, one at a time, mixing them into the mixture using a light speed. With the eggs now in the butter and sugar, now add the red food coloring and mix once more. Now, working in batches of two or three, add a bit of the flour and milk mixture into the egg, butter, sugar, and food coloring mix, mixing after each addition. Lastly, add a cup of boiling water. Yes, the batter will become thin, but it is this thin batter that makes the cake even lighter, something which is reminiscent of the old-style devil's food cake recipe. Remember that the red velvet cake is actually inherently a devil's food recipe.
Once your batter is done, line two 8-inch spongiform pans with parchment paper and pour half of the batter in each pan. Now it's time to bake the cakes, preheating the oven at 350 degrees with a tray on the lower position to catch any batter that might seep and drip from the pans. Bake the cakes for about 50 minutes to an hour, taking care to open the oven for testing the cake for doneness when you are only sure that the cake is almost done. Be sure you do this or else, opening the oven too early would drop the temperature and leave you with a flattened cake resembling a brownie. After all, historically, a brownie is nothing more than a failed devil's food cake. Now let us say we are successful with the cake. Now isn't that lovely? It's time to chill the cake. It will be helpful in the icing and frosting later. First, leave the cake to cool in room temperature. After that, place both in the refrigerator to cool further. While the cake is cooling, let's make the Nutella dressing. For that, you need 1 half cup of Nutella, 1 half cup of butter, and 1 half cup of sifted powdered sugar. If desired, you may add some vanilla to taste. Again, cream the Nutella and butter together. Once well mixed, add the powdered sugar and vanilla and mix further until it appears to be a velvety smooth spread. Set aside. Lastly, make your cream cheese icing. You need the following, two sticks or one cup of butter, one cup of cream cheese, one cup of sifted powdered sugar, and again some vanilla to taste. As with the Nutella dressing, first cream the butter and cream cheese until well mixed and fluffy. To this, add your sugar and vanilla and mix further until spreadable. Sometimes, one may want an even softer spread. If such is needed, a tablespoon or so of milk might do the trick. Now it's time to assemble your cake. First, get a cake turntable or a Lazy Susan would do. To this, place in the very middle a cake circle. Rotate slowly and taking notice the center position of the circle, adjust as necessary. On top of this, place three linear sheets of wax paper which would help in reducing the mess while frosting the cake. On top of this assembly, place one of the cakes, then spread the Nutella frosting on top. Once done, place the other cake on top, making a sandwich-like structure. This now is then cooled in the refrigerator to stabilize further before proceeding with the icing. Now sometimes you may need to press the two halves together just to make sure the gaps of the icing are properly filled. To do this, use a sheet of wax paper and press evenly on the top as you use a spatula to spread the filling on the sides while rotating the cake turntable. To apply the cream cheese icing, first trim the sides of the cake to make sure the evenness of the surfaces. Rotate the turntable and using a very sharp cake knife, Trim minimally, taking care to preserve the arc of the cake. Frosting the cake is a skill since there is a tendency to contaminate the cream cheese icing with the cake crumbs making it unattractive. To circumvent this, apply the cream cheese icing in two phases. 
first of this is to apply the first phase in order to seal the cake with icing, taking care not to let the crumbs be dragged into the icing and muddling its pure whiteness with some of the crumbs. It always pays to have two batches of icing separated for this purpose, and always get the icing using another implement which will never touch the cake for frosting. Instead, use a secondary spatula which would get the icing from the implement and use the secondary spatula as the spreader instead. Now we are done with the first phase of the icing. Cool the cake for about 15 minutes to solidify this phase. Then, remove the cake and apply the second and remaining phase of the icing. This is the finishing phase. It is this that when we spread evenly the icing, smoothing it further and applying any patterns you may deem fit. Once the pattern is set, gently remove the three sheets of wax paper from underneath using two hands for each of the sheets. Grabbing the cake by the cake circle, it's time to present the cake for your ultimate taste test. Okay. OMG. Delicious. For the size two figure. Taxi's out front for where we're called. Oh my gosh, this is good. Oh. So folks, it always pays to make the extra effort making this cake just to get foodgasm from your friends. <laughs>